Good morning, fifth grade. Today we're going to continue reading about the Great Depression. Before we get started, we have a quick write. It says, what do you think life was like during the Great Depression? Why? Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the focus question. Today we're thinking about how were farmers and sharecroppers affected during the Great Depression? How do first-hand quotes reveal the point of view and experiences farmers faced during the Great Depression. Our focus standard for today is analyzing multiple accounts of the same event or topic and describing the similarities and differences of the point of view they represent. Our vocabulary words today are depression, um, and that is talking about, in this case, it's talking about the economy, okay? And that's when um, a lot of people lose their jobs and they can't afford to pay their bills. And so um, you have people that become homeless and you have people who are hungry. And so you would draw a line to this picture. This is a picture of a group of people standing in line waiting for food. The next word is surplus, and that's when you have more than enough, more than you need, and you have um, some left over. And so this is an example of a surplus of money. And then last is foreclosure. Um, foreclosure is when you cannot pay the mortgage on your house, and the bank decides to take your house, because you owe them money for it. So your house um, is foreclosed on and you are evicted and you have to move out. Go ahead and turn the page. Um, today we're going to focus on just the first six paragraphs of our text, Okie Go Home. Um, and we're going to be collecting evidence about the Great Depression and how it affected farmers. All right, let's get ready to read. In box one, it tells us to collect evidence in paragraphs one through three to support the claim for millions of children growing up on those Depression-era farms. It was a time of hard work, little money, and learning to do without. And so we want evidence from the text that these children are um, working hard on farms, that they're not getting paid, and that they, um, that they don't have a lot of things. They don't have a lot of toys. They don't have a lot of food. They don't have a lot of clothes. Let's get ready to read. During the 1930s, about a quarter of all Americans still lived on farms. Okay, so that would be about, if there were 100 Americans, 25 of them would live on farms. Compared to fewer than 2% today. For millions of children growing up on those Depression-era farms, it was a time of hard work, little money, and learning to do without. And this is a statement that we're looking for evidence for, so let's keep reading. I have to get up every morning at 5 and milk 6 cows and carry in the water and cut the wood and then eat breakfast and go to school. A North Carolina farm boy wrote Eleanor Roosevelt. That boy walked four miles to catch the school bus, and that took him the rest of the way to his high school in Bryson City. When it rains, I can't go to school, he added, and part of the time I am late. I have done a boy's work ever since I was five years old. Turn the page. Wrote a 14-year-old Texas farm girl. This week, I've been breaking land with a sulky, which is a one-horse plow, and three mules. When I read how you, Miss Roosevelt, get $3,000 for each radio broadcast, I can't help but think how unjust the world is. All right, and so if we go back in these, um, in these, in paragraphs two and three, we want to get some quotes from this boy and this girl that let us know that their life is hard, they don't have a lot of money, and they have to do without. 
And one of the quotes um, that I highlighted from the boy is this part that says that he has to get up every morning at 5 o'clock and milk the cows and carry in the water and cut the wood and then eat breakfast and then go to school. So he has several chores to do before he can go to school every morning. I would underline that sentence. And another sentence I would underline is the one from this girl at the bottom of the page that says, I've done a boy's work ever since I was five years old. Um, which lets us know that um, that they need that her family needed a lot of help. Everyone had to help out even if the work was really hard. All right, and so in box one, I would write down one of those quotes, but make sure both of them are underlined in your text. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box two. And today we're, we're going to be thinking about the cause and effect relationships, and that's going to help us um, better understand how the Great Depression affected people living on farms. Um, and so the cause is why did something happen? And so in the blank, write something. Why did something happen? The cause answers the why question. The effect tells us what happened. And so a lot of times you'll wanna figure out what happened or the effect, and then you'll wanna figure out why it happened or the cause. Let's go to box three. We're going to continue reading paragraphs four through six, and we want to know why farmers had difficulty during the Great Depression. Why did farmers have difficulty during the Great Depression? We're on, um, we're at the paragraph that starts with American. American farmers were the world's most productive. Yet they, too, experienced hard times during the Depression. Because they produced far more than they could sell, huge surpluses piled up. The prices of farm products dropped steadily, while taxes on a farmer's land and the prices he paid for necessities did not. As a result, the average farmer was paying out more than he took in. Hundreds of thousands of farmers had borrowed money to buy their land and equipment. When they couldn't make payments to the bank, they lost everything through foreclosures and bankruptcy sales. Farm after farm went on the auction block. Slim Collier recalled the day his father took him to a farm foreclosure near Waterloo, Iowa. It was the 1st of March when they when they were forced off and all their household goods were sold, even family pictures. They went for five cents, ten cents apiece. Quite a few kids were brought by their parents, partly by morbid fascination, partly by sympathy. Well, there was something going on. And in those days, a no TV, no radio in some places, an event was an event. There were farmers who resisted. If they come to my farm, I'm going to fight, one man was quoted as saying. I'd rather be killed outright than die by starvation. But before I die, I'm going to set fire to my crops. I'm going to burn my house. I'm going to poison my cattle. All right, so he would rather destroy his property um, than have his house taken by the bank. Let's go to box three. It says, why did farmers have difficulty during the Great Depression? And if we go back into paragraph four, the first sentence tells us they had a hard time, and then the rest of the paragraph tells us why. And if we look in the second sentence, it says, because they produced far more than they could sell. Huge surpluses piled up. Which means the, the farmers were actually doing such a great job, they had a lot of crops. And they had so many crops, they had more crops than people would buy. And if people don't buy your crops, that means you're not getting money for them. So in box 3A, 
we would write this quote from paragraph 4. Because they produce far more than they could sell, huge surpluses piled up. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 3B. How did the piles of surpluses affect the farmers? If we keep reading in this paragraph, it says, The prices of the farm products dropped steadily, while the taxes on the farmer's land and the prices he paid for the necessities did not. As a result, the average farmer was paying out more than he took in. And so what this is saying is, because they had all of this extra, um, all these extra crops left over, they had to sell their crops for less and less money so that people would buy them. Which was good for the people, but if you were a farmer, you still had to pay your bills. And just because the price of your crops went down doesn't mean that your bills went down. Their bills stayed the same. And so because they weren't getting paid as much for their crops, they, weren't, they didn't have enough money at the end of the day to pay their bills. And so in box 3B, we would write down this sentence in 3B. The prices of farm products dropped steadily, while taxes on a farmer's land and the prices he paid for necessities did not. And if you have the fill in the blanks, you can fill in the next sentence. As a result, the average farmer was paying out more than he took in. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for box four. It says, what resulted from the farmers spending more money than they actually had? Okay, and so if you spend money than you actually have, that means the bank gave you that extra money to spend because you promised the bank that you would pay them back. Okay, and so what this question is asking us is what happens when you can't pay back the bank? Let's keep reading in paragraph 4. It says, hundreds of thousands of farmers had borrowed money to buy their land and equipment. Okay, that means they spent money that they did not have to buy equipment. When they couldn't make payments to the bank, they lost everything through foreclosures and bankruptcy sales. Farm after farm went on the auction block. Okay, so if farmers, um, if, they, if they don't have money to buy equipment, they could borrow it from the bank. And so in 4A, we would write down this sentence that says, Hundreds of thousands of farmers had borrowed money to buy their land and equipment. We write that sentence in box 4A. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for 4B. But when they borrowed more money than they had, it asks us what was the result when they borrowed more money than they had. And that when they couldn't make their payments to the bank, the text tells us they lost everything through foreclosures and bankruptcy sales. That means the bank took everything they had. And you need to write that sentence in 4B. Press pause to write down your answer and play when you're ready for the paragraph. It says, how were farmers affected during the Great Depression? And you could use um, the claim from box one that lets you know that farmers had, um, they had to work really hard, they made a little money, and they had to do without. And then you can talk about how they ended up in that situation using boxes three and four.